right, so a new issue that I've run into is the fact that my breather tube seems to be spitting out oil when I'm running it under full acceleration for a long time. On a highway run where I was about two miles at 80 miles an hour, when I finished the ride, I noticed that there was oil streaking all back here and dripping down, and you could tell that it's coming from here. You can actually see right now that it's saturated in oil. So I need to figure something out for this. And so my plan is to install an oil catch can. I bought this off a member on hauntedgrom.net. Uh, this is the one for the Grom, so it has the Grom bracket. Uh, but otherwise, it has all the same fittings as the Monkey version does. Uh, the Monkey version actually comes in two formats. One like this that goes along the side of the bike. Uh, and then another that incorporates into this uh, Kitako mount for the radiator. There's actually a few holes uh, up here at the top that are designed for a bracket that holds it. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find... Uh, that catch can sold individually. I have found on WeBike uh, the radiator kit that comes with the radiator and this specific bracket, uh, but nothing where I can buy this individually. And since I already have the radiator, uh, I decided to go ahead and buy this Grom one. Again, it was used in a good deal and just fashioned my own bracket to dismount it somewhere right about there. It really fills out the leftover space uh, between the radiator and uh, the intake, and I think it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to be doing is working on this mount, fashioning it such that I can mount it up to the bracket up here, and then connecting all the tubes. I believe one line goes back into the uh, oil filler, one goes to the crankcase breather, and I believe the other then is just a filter, probably this one, although I'm gonna need to clean this out because I'm not sure how much breathing it's doing as saturated as it is in oil. So I've got the mount off the bike, it's now here upside down, um, and then I've got the oil catch can with the mount for the Grom. It looks like I may be able to use this mount because this hole would line up with that and position it then relatively centered. I can actually scoot it a bit left here. It's slightly off center currently between these two uh, clamps. But if I could mount that here and then potentially maybe fashion some other bar that supports here and here and connects to here, I think that'd probably be enough mounting support. This isn't particularly heavy. All right, so instead of trying to build a bridge that goes from here to here, I'm actually just going to lop this part off so that uh, this side looks the same as this side. And I'm just going to drill an additional hole here. All right, so I've got this piece shaped the way that I want it, and it now uh, neatly aligns with the two holes. All right, so I made one change. I actually scooted everything back one hole. So the new hole that I made I actually ended up using one of the native holes on this mount, and then I drilled a new hole for this longer one, so I'll show you on the other side. Uh, previously I had this up here, but I scooted everything one back. Uh, and that was so I'd have the right amount of clearance uh, because the oil cooler uh, goes to about here. And then I wanted the oil catch can a little further back, but this seems to line up perfectly. Uh, and again, I just kind of lucked out that even though I made a mistake on the distancing, I was able just to slot it back to this hole and just drill one more. And actually the hole that I had previously cut gets covered by the bracket that holds the oil catch can. So I've got the oil catch can installation pretty much complete. I've got the bottom line here that's running down and returning into the oil filler cap. I have the line above that running along the body into a breather tube that I mounted on this bolt here. So it's at a pretty high point in the frame and takes up a space that otherwise was empty. And on this side, this is the line that goes on to the breather port on the clutch cover. I have a brass fitting here to extend it a bit for one more piece of tubing that connects to this side. So when pressure builds, the oil comes into this side of the oil catch can. And then on the other side, it can relieve pressure going up here and return the oil that it does capture blowing by down back into the engine. All right, so at the same time, I put in new SS lines to replace the rubber hoses that I had that you saw when I did the installation of the oil catch can. There's actually a couple of reasons that I did it. The most prominent one, though, is that I wanted to tap off the Kotaku clutch cover again for my oil cooler lines. When I put on the new oil cooler, I used the rubber hoses because I thought it would be easier to tap off of the big bore kit since that also had oil ports and I didn't have to have these 90 degrees. Actually, this time I used 45 degree lines to get around the RS3 exhaust. I thought it'd be simpler and I kind of like the look of the rubber hoses, uh, but I found that the oil wasn't flowing nearly as well coming out of the big bore kit. So I was doing a five mile uh, run, did it a couple of times and the bike was getting up to about 200 degrees, which seemed hot. Uh, with these 
stainless steel lines coming off of the Kotaku clutch cover instead, where I think it just cycles oil a little bit better. Uh, I was getting an average of 185 degrees for the exact same run with about the same ambient temperature outside. So 15 degrees cooler, about seven and a half uh, percent decrease in temperature and back to what it was before I installed the upgraded head and the intake and some of the other stuff that shouldn't really have much to do with overall engine temperature. So uh, happy to have my engine temps back to the way that they should be. I also do like the way that the stainless steel lines look a little bit cleaner and neater and also take up a lot less space than those big rubber tubes did with the clamps on the ends. So I still have a little more riding on the bike to do to really get the, the target AFR set. And after that, I'll get the bike dynoed again. And I still have a couple more things that I'm looking to do this bike. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.